All right, so in this example problem, we have a long jumper, a mass 75 kilograms, that leaves the ground with a velocity of 10 meters per second. All right, so let's draw that. So we're going to have the ground, let's make the ground green. And the long jumper is going to leave the ground, go up, and come back down. So with this initial position here, we have V initial equaling 10 meters per second. And we know that the long jumper's mass is 75 kilograms. All right, so let's keep reading. At the peak of her jump, her velocity is five meters per second. So at our peak here, our velocity final is gonna be equal to five meters per second. Now remember, we have not split velocities into components. So we don't have to worry about that because energy is a scalar quantity and not a vector quantity. However, keep in mind that this is an x and a y, so this velocity initial here, but the velocity final up here at the peak or max height, being the five meters per second, would be solely in the x direction. The y component would be zero, so it does match up with what you're seeing with projectile motion. All right, so let's keep reading this problem. We wanna know how high off the ground the peak of the jump is, so we wanna know what y final is when the velocity is five meters per second. All right, so we wanna apply our conservation of energy relationship in order to solve this problem. Now there's a couple of unknowns. Sometimes I use uh, y, sometimes I use h when I do these formulas, so please don't let that confuse you. Our h initial here We have to figure out what that is. So down here, you're given velocity initial. So we wanna know what the h or the y value is at the same time or point where the velocity is 10 meters per second. Now remember that potential energy is always measured relative to a baseline. So we have to define where y equals zero is. And because we're starting off the ground and we know the velocity of the ground, it's a great idea to make y initial be zero. So we're gonna say y initial down here is going to be zero. This is what you see plugged in up here. So I took the mass times the acceleration of gravity and remember back when I derived the formula, we plugged the minus sign into the formula already. So we, we put a positive 9.8 in here and then times zero because we made y initial zero. Then we need to do our initial kinetic energy. So we're gonna take one half times the mass times the initial velocity squared. Then we need to deal with our work non-conservative. So work non-conservative is force times the distance over which that force is applied. But it says up here in the problem we're supposed to ignore air resistance. So our force non-conservative and thus, because anything times zero is zero, our work non-conservative is going to be zero. So it takes care of the left-hand side of the equation. And in fact, the only thing we have to worry about is the initial kinetic energy, because everything else is zero. And I'm plugging in all of the zeros here rather than just ignoring those terms because I want you to sh show you and remind you that anything times zero is zero. All right, over here on the other side, we're gonna take the mass times the acceleration into gravity times the final height, so the final y or h value. And that is going to be our unknown, that's what we're looking for. We are then going to take the one half times the mass times the final velocity, and the final velocity was given in the problem, so we're taking one half times 75 times five squared. All right, so you can see here, I have multiplied together the numbers to find the kinetic energy and remember, we're looking for a value inside of the gravitational potential energy. So we're looking for this y final value. Now be careful of your algebra here. You cannot combine these two terms because this has a variable and this does not. So I have to subtract the 938 joules to the other side, which is where I get 2812 and then I can divide by the 735 to get a max height or a y final of 3.83 meters. 